Today we're talking about vibrato. I started playing flute in fourth grade and I learned how to play flute from my wonderful band directors and I didn't start taking private lessons until I was in high school. So from fourth grade through eighth grade, there was no vibrato to be had. My wonderful private lessons teacher in high school one day said, you should use vibrato and I was like, okay. So here's how I learned how to play with vibrato. My teacher played something with vibrato and something without. He asked me, do you hear the wave in the sound? And I was like, yeah. And he said, okay, now you try it. So I did and that was that. That's, I started using vibrato. At that time I was doing a lot of listening and imitating recordings. I listened to so much James Galway. And I think having those concepts of sound and vibrato and all of that in my mind made it easier to start elevating my own playing. So for years I just played with vibrato without thinking too much about it and I didn't really practice vibrato at all. Only recently have I started using vibrato exercises in my daily fundamentals routine and if you've seen my video on fundamentals, you've seen me doing it. And I've discovered a lot of benefits beyond just vibrato and I've come up with a few specific ideas that might help some of the problems you might be having. So let's jump into the first idea and I'm gonna use a simplified version of the exercise that I do in my fundamentals routine. So here we go. My favorite vibrato pulse exercise starts with the metronome at 60 and we're gonna play triplet pulses that are very exaggerated starting on middle C going down by half steps. Whenever I teach this exercise to students who haven't seen it before, there are a few things that come up each time, and there are three things to kind of think about as you're doing this very first one at 60 that will help you later. So the first one is just, are my triplets even in my mind? Am I thinking really clearly about blueberry, strawberry, chocolate? If you're not feeling the pulse and the beat really securely, there's a little bit of a conflict within you that's trying to find the beat as you play and trying to figure out what the triplet is and trying to listen at the same time. If you're locked in, you can almost let go a little bit easier. And being able to let go is very important with vibrato because if we are super sporadic, by the time we go faster, we're gonna stay sporadic. So start figuring out how do I lock in and how do I feel easy even this low. The second thing builds on this and that's are each of my pulses equal or am I pushing more in the downbeat and then relaxing away? So it would sound like this if I were uneven. So if we get that habit while we're going slow and then we try to speed up, it sounds like a frantic exercise. a very specific difficulty. It has to do with breathing. If while you're doing this, your vibrato sounds like this. So basically you're running out of air by the end and it gets harder and harder to distinguish that there's a depth of wave versus keeping it equal the whole way through. It might have to do with the way you're using yourself to breathe. And my favorite way to practice for this specific thing is by using air flute to first hear what your airstream sounds like. So if you're having trouble with the breathing and you feel like you're pushing all your air out while you're doing this and you can't really hear a full wave within the sound, you might be using too much effort on the front end and not letting go for the back end. So we have to think more about the back end of the wave in order to actually hear the depth of it. So if I'm really squeezing and pushing to get this pulse, and then I run out of air. If I'm only worried about that super pressurized top end of the pulse, I might start squeezing in the abs. And that's where we start to feel like we're gonna keel over by the end and we're just running out as we go. I'm only going to feel more and more pressurized and then I'm gonna run out of air more. So I have to keep my abs free so that I am resilient enough to go between the pulse and I won't run out of air as easily because I'm not squeezing and falling over. So now here's my airstream if I'm really focused on keeping my abs soft and resilient, letting them release.
This one's still super slow. You might still run out a little, but we still have a little bit more freedom. And I'm trying to keep myself light, keeping my head, my back, my arms from just being a push machine. Now let's add a flute. And just notice when I put my flute here and I take this first breath, what do my abs do? Do they squeeze right there? Because if so, we can let go. Okay, so I'm letting the abs go. I'm breathing freely. Moving a little bit so I'm free and soft and open. And as I take my first breath, I'm also associating that inhale with letting go and staying soft. Something else that can happen when you're first learning vibrato, especially if you learn to then relax back to the back end, is totally stopping the air altogether. So if you're air flute, we hear air, stop, air stop or in the sound and it doesn't sound like a true round shape thinking about a round boomerang that's continuous it's really helpful and if you're going 60 at the beginning of this you have the time and space to kind of listen and you can even stop the metronome and just hear something really slow like this Learning to create a shape that doesn't stop, but you can actually control that it's still going on. And in order to do that, I find it very helpful to stay free. So now we're gonna start on an A flat. The metronome is at 70 now, and we're gonna keep going down with these half steps and a couple more things to watch out for. So we just mentioned staying soft on that initial breath, noticing if you're creating tension and squeezing when you get to this point with your first breath, because there we lose our freedom to create a resonant depth within the sound. So we're inhibiting that. We also wanna not push so much on our first initiation. If we release our air like a rocket, it's gonna have a natural decay because we're just gonna run out of air. We've used way too much at the beginning. So when you tongue, you can think about this idea. I think it's from Jeannie Baxter of Da Ha Ha. To just start an effortless wave in the sound, not pushing too much. So if you're breathing really well and you're starting out with ease and it's feeling effortless at the beginning but you're still squeezing by the end, there's a chance that when you move fingers, there's a little habit in there that tells you to do something else. So beyond just lifting the pinky to go to G, we're pushing a little more. And you can hear it in the airstream. So let's listen to the airstream and I'll do it on purpose at 70. We hear a change in the sound, so we do something dramatic about it, but instead, imagine that you are still just playing A flat and let the pinky move. Make it that simple so that you're not using extra effort. That's gonna save you breath. It's a tiny thing, but it matters. If you still can't get the feeling of this, Play the full round of this on just A flat and you might notice it's easier because you're not making any change in the fingers so the air is just staying consistent. It's simple, it's consistent. When we go to G, if it's harder, it's because you're doing something when you change to the G. Use air flute to help you figure that out and you have to use your imagination and pretend you're still playing A flat so that there's no change within and just all you have to do is move the pinky. It's really that simple, and we tend to overcomplicate things because who knows why. Vibrato is an enhancement of sound, and my favorite thing about this exercise is that it can help you bring your sound to life in a beautiful way when you're using vibrato or not. And when you're doing these first couple of rounds at 60 and 70, and if we're truly putting that exaggerated pulse within the sound, and we're hearing cracked notes, and we're hearing airiness, probably too close to your and closed off somehow. Be really curious about all the things you're hearing and use it as a workshop for experimenting. Do I need to release the jaw? Do I need to let go of my corners? Do I need to think about resonating more? Or do I need to sort of ground myself so I don't have so much upper body tension? Is that why? Or maybe it's an angle thing for airiness and you can watch my 
airy flute remedies video because it has the same ideas in here that you can apply to this exercise. It's all of these things combined are a really powerful way to open the sound and find true resonance. And I like to let myself have a huge mess at the beginning of this exercise because I want to find all those beautiful things that help open my sound. And by the end of this exercise, I feel like everything is right with the world. So especially in the low, if I'm too close up but I'm doing that true pulse, here's what it might sound like. So now let's think about the high notes. Something that can happen when we go to the high register with vibrato is that we don't hear that full depth of wave anymore. So sometimes when we learn high notes, we learn to squeeze more, push more, pressurize more to get the high note to come out. And we also squeeze here and, and sort of pressurize the embouchure. And we learned early on that those two things prevent us from hearing that full depth of the wave. So if that's how you're playing your high notes now, you can use this exercise to start in that friendly place of middle to low and then hang on to the openness, the softness of the abs as you get higher so that you can feel that full depth of wave and a full open resonance and beautiful depth of sound for the high notes. And that's another reason why I love this one. It can help you hear your vibrato on the high notes and also just find more ease in your high notes as well. So just like we needed to really angle down to find that beautiful center resonant point for the low notes, the high notes need our angle to be a little bit higher. So we need just a little bit more bottom lip available. If you're too high here, it's gonna cause you to have to pressurize. So I hope you're seeing that you can use this exercise beyond just vibrato. It can help you find a beautiful, open, resonant, centered, low sound, middle register sound, and beautiful depth and singing luminous quality to your high sound. And then you're integrating vibrato with that, which is what we want. I hope you found this helpful. If you have other questions or thoughts on this subject, please let me know in the comments below. And please like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Thanks so much for watching.